friends, welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. My name is Chris Rogers and I am your host and I am so blessed that you have chosen to join me today. In today's episode, we're going to continue this little series we've been doing about Jesus said. Did Jesus say? Did Jesus not say? And the title today is Did Jesus Call a Woman a Bitch? Hey, okay, clickbait course it's clickbait and uh, we're going to be talking about Mark chapter 7 where it looks on the outside that Jesus is calling a a woman a dog Uh, so we're going to explore that passage what did Jesus actually say what was Jesus actually saying and does he say what we think he says in the passage so that's what we're going to be exploring before I get there I want to say two things number one if you enjoy today's episode just looking at some of the culture and context Uh, You might like the Bible book by book. It's a book that I published a uh, number of years ago now, over 10 years ago, the Bible book by book came out. It walks through the entire Bible, uh, looking at it from its culture and context. You know, Jesus was not English. He was Jewish. He was a Jewish, uh, brown skinned, olive skinned uh, rabbi who grew up in a region uh, of Galilee called Nazareth and that in that has implications on everything that Jesus says, every analogy and picture uh, is shaped in that context. Um, So you might enjoy that book. Now, that book is getting a reprint. It comes out next year as a reprint, and I'll be talking about it a lot. Uh, Second edition, really excited by its second edition, but you can still get copies of the first edition on on Amazon as like... um, library copies that people are selling and that kind of thing. So... um, if you like this stuff, then you're going to like that book. That's the first thing uh, I was going to say. The second thing I was going to say is this. Please, please, please. I love engagement. I love people talking. Twitter, I mean, my t- on Twitter, I'm, I am Rabbi Rogers. Why Rabbi? Because that was my kid nickname. That was the nickname I had when I was at school by some of my friends. So Rabbi Rogers on Facebook. Uh, you know, I love to hear your comments, your thoughts, uh yeah please do engage with me don't don't just read uh listen read listen to do the podcast you know let me know what you think do you disagree would you say it differently um i love hearing from you so they, so they do uh do that anyway here we go i'm gonna jump straight in did jesus call a woman a bitch here we go let's see what the answer to that question is Now, obviously, the word bitch is never found in the Bible, so Jesus never used that phrase. But I'm going to read to you from Mark chapter 7, 42 to 30. And this is a passage that I've had a number of people over the years tell me that they're not going to become a Christian because Jesus was racist. Or I'm not going to become a Christian because of the way that Jesus treated women. And let's just step back. When I read the Gospels, all I see is a Jesus who is liberating, filled full of love, and desires to uh, elevate people, not bring them down. The only people that Jesus uh, aims to challenge are the religious leaders. So the Pharisees and Sadducees, Jesus uh, calls them uh, names at times and um, brood of vipers as, as an example uh, to undermine them. But he only does that to religious people, to anybody outside the Jewish faith. Uh, or to someone who is an outcast, uh, he always builds up. So uh, this passage therefore stands out as a, what what do we do with this? So let me read this to you, and then we'll spend a little bit of time just unpacking it and asking the question, what is Jesus actually saying here? Is it what it looks like on the surface? So let me just delve in. Jesus left that place I went to the vicinity of Tyra. He entered a house that he did not want anybody to know about it. Yet he could not keep this quiet, uh, could not keep his presence quiet. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Siren Phoenicia, And she begged Jesus to drive out the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it is not right to take the children's bread 
and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replies, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon had gone. Great little passage. But in it, you've got this line. Jesus says to her, first let the children eat uh, all they want, he told her. For it is not right uh, for the children's bread to be tossed to the dogs. Now, what's really interesting is if you read this passage in the NIV translation, uh, what Jesus says is is somewhat 99% similar, but there's just this, this little twist that's different as well. For it is not right to take, um, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. So is Jesus implying that she's a dog, and therefore she does not deserve or can't have? Uh, what Jesus could offer. The implication here, obviously, on first reading, surface level reading, is Jesus is calling her a dog. You know, you know what? I, I'm here to feed the children. I'm not here to feed the dogs. Is essentially what you could think uh, that he's trying to say to her. Why would he be linking her um, with dogs, with an animal? Why would he do that? And part of understanding this passage is understanding the use of the phrase dog in that culture. Um, just a little example. Um, we don't see this in the Bible, but we do see it in other texts. Samaritans, during the time of Jesus, uh, were often associated with pigs. Pigs, in Jewish uh, thinking, were unclean. Uh, they were, they were uh, hooven animals that were unclean. You don't eat the pig. Uh, and therefore, Samaritans were uh, dirty Samaritans and there was this racist hatred towards Samaritans and they were known as the pigs. And in, in a number of Jewish texts, the Samaritans had just talked about those uh, pigs from Shechem. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a real way of undermining and, and, and saying how dirty and unclean the, the Samaritans were. In the same way, Gentiles had become associated uh, as as dogs, unclean dogs. And in the Jewish world, uh, the Jewish community were, were, were the people of God. They were the children of God. And everybody else was the wild animals that would come and creep around and, and pick up the leftovers from underneath the table. Jesus is tapping into a metaphor He's not specifically calling her a dog. So let's just unpack this a little bit more. So uh, in the Jewish, uh, so in the um, Greek text, the, the New Testament is written in the Greek. Uh, there are two words I want to introduce you to. The first word is, uh, is kuarin, which translates as a pet dog. Now, sometimes this passage um, to try and make it a bit more palatable for people. Bible teachers have said, uh, when Jesus says, um, uh, I'm here to feed the children of Israel, uh, not the the dogs, to try and make it more palatable, people have, have argued, hey, when he says dogs, he actually means pet dogs, pet animals. And that's how we, you know, when I just read it from the NIV, their dogs, that's a way of trying to soften the blow a little bit that Jesus could be calling this woman a dog. So by referencing the, the, the more as pets uh, has been one of the ways that they've tried to make it a bit more palatable. But actually, that isn't the Greek word that Jesus uses. Uh, Jesus uses the word kuon, which is really translated as a, as a wild, unclean animal, a wild dog. So when, when Jesus says those words to her, let me read it again. Uh, first, let the children uh, eat all that they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. It's the wild dogs. It's the unkept dogs, the unclean dogs. These are not sheep dogs that have been looked after by anybody. They were not family pets. You didn't really keep dogs as pets. Uh, dogs were, were wild dogs. Uh, 
animals. In fact, dogs uh, roamed around looking for scraps to eat. That's the phrase that Jesus is is using. Jesus uses the uh, kuon, uh, Greek word. So he's, he's very much using a metaphor of a wild animal. Right, well, what do we do with this then? Well, let's just head backwards for a moment to Exodus 22, verse 30, where this is one of the first times this picture of uh, somebody eating from a table and casting off leftovers to the floor for animals. This is where it first comes up. Exodus chapter 22, verse 30. You are to be my holy people. So do not eat the meat of an animal torn by wild beasts. Hey, don't eat the roadkill, okay, is, is what he's saying. Don't eat the animals that have been half eaten by another animal. If an animal has half eaten another animal, you aren't to eat it. You are to throw it, it says, to the dogs. And this, this is normal practice. So give away the rubbish to the dog. Don't, don't you eat the roadkill. Uh, what you eat is, is, you know, the good food. Uh, leave the leftovers to the dogs. That is a teaching to God's people. Uh, you are human beings. You don't need to eat uh, half-eaten animals. Uh, you can eat an animal. Leave roadkill for the dogs to eat. That is just a picture. It's a teaching from the book of Exodus about how to live as God's people. Don't eat roadkill. Therefore, what we see Jesus doing is he's tapping into this picture. The children of Israel, well, you are to eat the good stuff. And what goes under the table is the leftovers. It's it's the, the flesh of the animals that is left for the dogs. It's the um, what's on the floor is for them, not, not for you. So that's what Jesus is tapping into. That's really important. Jesus is using a picture uh, about what's appropriate for one and what's appropriate for the other. So have that in mind. Now, it's interesting in Philippians chapter 3, verse 2, Paul uses this picture as well. Again, referencing in many ways Exodus 22. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. Paul is using the phrase dogs. Dogs is any evildoer, somebody who is unpure, who is outside God's family, the pagan. So the pagan, the evildoer, is associated uh, as a dog. Uh, so just to understand what's going on for a second, Jesus is a using a metaphor that is pulled straight from Exodus 22. B, he's playing into a cultural picture. Uh, God's people are the chosen people. They're the children of Israel. And that everybody else then are the dogs that eats from the scraps of the table, the unclean ones. And that's clearly what, what, what the people of God, Israel, believed. Israel believed that they were God's chosen people, that everybody else were the outcasts. They were the unclean. So that's what Jesus is speaking into. That's what Jesus is, is using. And I would want to argue that I believe Jesus is using this with a little bit of a glint in the eye. Because I think what Jesus is doing here is Jesus is testing someone to see their true intentions. And the woman proves herself by being the persistent widow. So Jesus is using a, a phrase here uh, to try and push this woman to see what her true intentions are. And what is revealed is that this woman is persistent and she really does know and believe who Jesus is is so dogs run wild they ran often in packs uh dogs had low status was the woman the syrophoenician woman was she offended by what jesus says is is the woman offended by the fact that jesus may have just referenced her as a dog well we read the passage we actually don't see that at all um first like the children Eat all that they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she replies, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Jesus, but actually I'm here 
to get the crumbs. I I'm desperate. She's not offended by what he's saying. She's proving to Jesus how desperate she is. Then he tells her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So what is going on here? What is going on? What's going on is this. Jesus is testing the Syrophoenician woman to see what her intentions are. What are you here to do? Are you here to trip me up? Are you here to catch me out? What are you after? And he he uses this. You know, she's come for a miracle. And Jesus says, hang on. Uh, my primary calling right now is to reveal the kingdom of God to the Jewish people. That's what I've come for. Uh, I am not ready yet for a wider ministry. She's traveled from Phoenicia. Where's she from? Phoenicia. It was a Roman province in Syria. Here's a woman that's traveled to Jesus. This is how desperate she is. She's a Syrophoenician woman, a Syrian Phoenician, Syrophoenician woman uh, from this Roman province. She's traveled to Jesus because that's how desperate she is. And, and you can see, can you imagine like Jesus, Jesus like, I'm not right yet, ready yet for people to be coming further afield. Uh, I'm, I'm here for the Jews. I'm not ready to share it further. Like we, we, there's a mission I've got here that I'm, I'm building up to. So is she offended? No. Is she obstinate and committed? Uh, is she desperate? Yes. Uh, and that's what is really revealed here. So Jesus is trying to test her and see what her true intentions are. So this is not about directly, personally challenging her as a dog. He's not saying, hang on, I'm not going to kill your daughter because you're a dog. He's using all the metaphors and pictures of the day of somebody that's outside of the Jewish faith somebody that's outside now we uh, read offense into that uh, but you've got to just work contextually in understanding the the world view um, here the, the Jewish people had these derogatory phrases and we would say to be fair racist um, phrases you know that's that's how we see what happens with the Samaritans um, but don't read that on to Jesus. He's using that language to test this woman and see what she says and what does she do. So here we find a woman with great faith and she sought out Jesus because she's got such desire. She's hunted him down. So Jesus tests her to see her true intentions and what's really interesting here is she lives out a previous teaching of Jesus Jesus told a story didn't he about the persistent widow who kept coming persistently to um, uh, the leaders of the town uh, to get uh, the care and uh, the right law um, for her she was persistent and here we have uh, a, a, a woman who you could even possibly say is a widow because there's no man um, mentioned but she's persistently coming to rabbi jesus to see the healing of her daughter jesus would you heal my daughter hey i'm not here for you i'm not come for the outsider yet and she says yes but even the outsider needs the crumbs from under the table rabbi jesus and he says ha ha your faith your persistence yes go your daughter is healed. And we lose some of the humour of this, I think, um, just the way, the way it's translated into the into the English. So I'm just going to pull back a second. So this whole story that we're reading is from the Gospel of Mark. Mark has a very precise reason for writing the Gospel. He sets it out very, very clearly right at the very beginning so mark one says this the beginning of the gospel of jesus christ the son of god the gospel of mark he set out to tell you and i that jesus is lord that jesus is the son of god that's what this book is primarily trying to argue that jesus is the son of god so in mark chapter 1 verse 11 we have jesus's baptism and there's a loud voice this is my son and i am well pleased with him and then in Mark chapter 9, verse 7, the transfiguration, a loud voice says, this is my son whom I love. And then in Mark 15, we have a centurion who sees the way that Jesus dies and he says, surely this was the son of God. This entire gospel is setting out this argument 
that Jesus is Lord. He is the Son of God. That's who he is. So therefore, Jesus, Jesus is Lord over the Jews. And this passage from Mark 7, it reveals something new to us. That Jesus is not only Lord for the Jews, he's also Lord for the dogs. The outcast and the unclean ones. Uh, Jesus is Lord over all. He's Lord for all people. Jesus was not here for the inner circle, although his primary mission on earth was to the inner circle. And he had to minister in the inner circle so the inner circle would crucify him. So Jesus was not there for primarily the, the inner circle of his own spiritual family. But Jesus is Lord for all people, even the outsiders, whose names we do not even know. So what's fab about this little story is we don't know what this woman's called. All we're told is she's a Syrophoenician woman. All we know is a woman who is an outcast has come to Rabbi Jesus to seek his um, power and majesty, his glory. She calls him Lord. I don't know if you noticed that in uh, the reading. Uh, she actually calls Jesus Lord. Let me read that bit to you again. Where was it? Here we go. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. She didn't call him Rabbi. I don't know if you noticed that. that. She knows who he is. She knows he's Messiah, Lord. She doesn't call him rabbi, teacher. She calls him Lord. So she knows who this guy is. So this story is, is a story that has been placed right here in the heart of the Gospel of Mark to pick up this idea that Jesus is the Son of God. He is Lord, but he is not just Lord for the inner circle and the spiritual family, the Jewish people. He's Lord for all people, even the outsiders, uh, whose names we do not know. So... Does Jesus call this woman a name? No, but he's using a metaphor and a picture to paint a picture of his ministry and what he's doing right now. He uses this to challenge her. He's testing her to see what her true intentions were. How was she going to respond to this? And she responds with persistence. The question for us is, what do we do with this then? Like, Where, where do we go from this? Number one, I would say this very simply the Jesus that loves you is the Jesus that loves the Jewish people. He is a Jesus that loves the outsider. He is the Jesus that loves the misfit. He is the Jesus that loves the ones that you don't love. The people that you may look at and see as an outsider. The person that you may see as the wild animal, the dog. The person that you may not even see as human being for whatever reason. This story tells us that Jesus does see all people uh, as, as his children. Jesus has come for all the outsiders. So the challenge for me in this is, is who, who for me would be the outsider? And how do I need to act like Jesus to love them and draw them towards him? All people deserve uh, Jesus. So that'd be the, the first thing I think that this passage just challenges me on. The second thing is uh, I'm challenged to make sure that I'm forever asking the question, what was actually happening at the time? Uh, sometimes we read a story in our Western context with our English Bible and we think we understand it. When actually to understand Jesus from his perspective, his culture, his time, uh, may draw something new out something different that we'd not necessarily seen before so one of the challenges for me is this how do i read the bible better how do i get to know and understand the context and culture well actually friends one of those ways is the bible book by book um when the second edition comes out next year look i'm going to be talking about it a lot to understand the culture and context of the people and places and locations of the bible can really really help us and, and the bible book by book is one of the the easiest uh resources to find out uh what is going on during the time uh, that this book was written or chapters of this book were written. That's one of the ways. Tom Wright has written some amazing commentaries. Um, the, the Bible for Everyone, his Everyone commentary series is just phenomenal. Uh, if you want to learn more about some of the cultural stuff, then, then reading his commentaries can be just breathtaking uh, as well as you, as you understand. Um, 
one of my secret weapons as well. There's a guy called Ray Vandalan. He's a he's a Dutch American uh, historian. Uh, contextual historian he's one of my secret weapons I love Ray Vanderland and uh, give him a bit of a Google uh, because anything that he has written any of his videos on YouTube are just spectacular helping us understand the culture and context of the Bible the world that it was written in and uh, you may find little treasures in some of his videos uh, as well so I hope you find that interesting helpful a bit different um, did Jesus call a woman a bitch no does he call her a wild dog kind of is he calling her a wild dog or just the outsider well it's the outsider and uh, even the outsider can come and eat from the crumbs of the table uh, and that's the big the big picture the metaphor here that we're meant to be engaging with that actually there's food for everyone and um and we're invited to come and be able to eat up the crumbs and be a part of what god is doing so there friends i hope you find that interesting inspiring until next time grace and peace